You may know Snot for his breakout hit single, Gosha, or for his and Kochi's recent 2021 platinum single, Tell Him. Maybe you've even been a one-day fan of him since the era of tissue files on SoundCloud. Either way, it's no doubt that he's one of the most promising young artists that has come from SoundCloud onto the rap scene over the last couple of years. And even with the quick success that he's had so far, I don't think he's even close to hitting his prime yet. So whether you've been a day one fan or you're just a casual listener that likes his hits, today I'm going to show you the past, present, and future of who he is and where he's going. So without further ado, this is the story of Snot. Snot was born on December 16, 1997 to the name Eddie Jr. Edward. He spent the first seven years of his life in the concrete jungle of New York City, but he and his family would then relocate to the sunny state of Florida, more specifically Lake Worth Beach. This is where Snot would spend the rest of his childhood and eventually where he would start building the foundation to his rap career. It all began in 2016, which would have been his senior year of high school when his friend at the time, Wetback Manny, who had already been putting out music on SoundCloud, showed Snot how to start recording and using a mic. That same year, Snout would begin releasing his own first tracks on SoundCloud. Although in interviews, he stated that he thinks these songs he was releasing at the time were kind of trash because of the mic he was using at the time. Luckily, not too long after, Manny would end up getting a condenser mic that he would let Snot use to record better quality tracks. And about a year and a half later, on April 24th, 2018, Snot would release his first EP titled The Tissue Files. The EP included five tracks with a couple of small features from artists such as Camaro Nazi and Subject Z, as well as production from Windows and YZ. Being his first project, it's easy to tell that there's room for improvement on it, but there were also some clear glimpses of potential throughout his project. Much of the EP almost has a feel more like a laid-back comethazine with a really chill, effortless delivery. My favorite track on the EP is probably Pull Up, and I recommend checking it out if you want a glimpse of Snot's earlier sound and how it's developed since then. A little less than five months later, the potential that was heard on the tissue files would come to fruition with Snot's September release of his breakout hit single, Gosha. This song would be the main kickstart to his career and and is still one of his biggest songs to date with over a quarter of a billion streams on Spotify, 30 million on SoundCloud, and an RIAA Gold certification. Although this was huge for a relatively new artist, Snout wasn't one for taking breaks, and less than four months later on January 1st of 2019, he would release the single Billy Boy, which would be featured on the pilot episode of the massively successful first season of Euphoria. As you can imagine, after releasing two majorly successful singles in only four months, as a new artist, it wasn't long until he got signed to a record label, and later that year, Year, he would close the deal with 300 Entertainment, who he's still stuck with to this day. Shortly after being signed, Snot did what had to be done, dropping his first studio album titled Tragedy on March 6, 2020. This album offered a much larger glimpse into who Snot was as an artist at the time. A lot of the tracks had a similar sound to more refined tissue files, but there was also tracks like Megan as well as Moon and Stars featuring Maggie Lindemann that showcased Snot's try at a more melodic style of rap. There were also tracks such as Beretta featuring Wi-Fi's Funeral, which is one of my favorites, that offered a little faster flow, but still with the laid-back delivery that Snot was known for. He also ended up adding Gosha to the project, which along with Moon and Stars are still two of his biggest songs to this day. Another fun fact about the album is that the last song on it, Stranded, was actually produced by Eam Triplin, who you may or may not know as he's recently started paving his own path into the mainstream rap scene with his hit single, Awkward Freestyle. With all this success in such a short period of time, you might be wondering why he was never seen on an XXL freshman list. And the answer is that he was actually asked to be a part of the list around the time that he released Tragedy, but he declined due to XXL apparently losing his freestyle. As well as, as he stated in his Instagram story, that he believed that there were no other rappers at the time that deserved it more than him. So instead of going with XXL, he decided to team up with Cole Bennett and Lyrical Lemonade and created the music video for his lead single Revenge to his next album, Beautiful Havoc. Not many know this, but Revenge was actually produced by Eam Triplin, and it's easily one of my favorite snots songs ever. If you haven't heard it yet, you gotta listen. Less than a month later, Snout would collaborate with Lyrical Lemonade a second time on the music video for the single Mean, featuring Flo Millie. This was the second single to Beautiful Havoc, and 15 days later, the day before Halloween, he would officially release the album. This is a good time to note that this release was only about 7 months after his first album, which is a pretty quick turnaround, but surprisingly, it turned out to be another high quality project with tasteful features such as Denzel Curry and Ian Dior. It also went on to become his first charting album, peaking at number 172 on the Billboard 200. It was easy to see even more growth from Snot on this project, and it definitely has more hits than flops. Some of my favorite tracks on this one include Revenge, Sangria, 
Mean, Like Me, and Life, and it's probably my favorite of his albums so far. In the five months following this major release, he would go on to drop music videos for five more songs off the album including Sangria, Life, Like Me, Watch Out, and Who Do I Trust. As you can probably tell, Snot doesn't really like to take breaks from his music, so shortly after releasing the last music video from Beautiful Havoc, he would release the single Whipski, featuring Lil Steez with production from Taz Taylor, Nash Beats, and Cody Cody, who's actually my favorite producer. The song was a hit and would be his first single to come close to charting, ending up at 25th on the bubbling under the Hot 100 charts. Getting that close to finally charting a single meant to Snot that he could take no breaks. Only a month and a half later, he came back with the feature on the track Tell Him with Cochise, which would end up peaking at 64th on the Hot 100, becoming Snot's first appearance on the Hot 100, as well as becoming the first platinum single that he was a part of. Not only did Snot just have a feature on this track though, I personally think that he carried the track, which is even better. Later Later that same year, Snot would begin hyping up the drop of his third studio album, Ethereal, releasing the first single on the album titled Go on November 24th, 2021. He followed up on this on February 4th of 2022 with the single Doja featuring ASAP Rocky, which would be his first single on his own to hit the Hot 100, peaking at 84th. This is another track that if you haven't heard it and you're trying to get into Snot, I recommend you check it out. A week after the release of Doja, he would officially release Ethereal, which included the biggest features that he's had to date. On it, he has tracks with ASAP Rocky, Teddy Jones, Kevin Abstract, Juicy J, Joey Badass, and even a trippy red feature on the track alone. So with all those features, it had to have been his first entrance into the top 100, right? No. The album has its ups and downs, but unfortunately for many people, it didn't quite live up to all the hype. The album is the most versatile project that Snot has ever made, with sad and pretty songs like Blue Moon, and hard hitting tracks like Doja, boom bap type tracks like How You Feel, and even some songs with obvious trip at night or cardi inspiration such as 5am and Euphoric. But with all these different styles and influences coming together on one album, as you could imagine, the album seems really scattered and hard to follow. It almost has the feel of Snot being a jack of all trades, but a master of none as some people like to call it. Now, although Ethereal wasn't all it was hyped up to be, I think it's safe to say that every artist can have a bad album now and then, and as long as they don't let it get to their head, it usually isn't a big deal. Snot had a pretty quiet year since the release of Ethereal, only dropping three other singles in 2022. One of the singles he released pretty recently, titled Simple, came along with a music video directed by Mikey Rare, where Eam Triplin can be spotted in the background. Shortly after that, on November 6th, Snot was featured on the single Let You Know by Eam Triplin, which is a damn good song in my opinion, and makes me even more excited to see more collaborations between the two in the future. Moving forward, I think we could easily see another big year for Snot, as it's clear to see that he has a lot left to offer the rap scene. With how great of a work ethic he has, I could definitely see him dropping another charting album this year, and I also wouldn't be surprised to see him featured on more big projects and singles with how good he is at features. Also with the recent success of Eam Triplin, I wouldn't be surprised to see more collaborations between the two, which would be beneficial for both of their careers. So all in all, I hope you enjoyed this video, and make sure to leave a like if you learned anything new about Snot. And if you have any predictions on what you think he's going to be doing in the future, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and until next time, this has been in the limelight.